Hello, I'm Sean Powers, and today we are going to finish up section 1.2 of the Linux Plus certification uh, series that we're doing. Uh, specifically, we're going to cover how to copy files over the network. Now, our objective list specifically talks about these three different tools. So we're going to use all three of them. I use the first two all the time. Um, I don't know that apart from showing how to do it, I've ever actually used NC or Netcat to uh, move a file from one place to another, but it's listed as a as a copying files between system methodology. So we will do it, um, even though in practice, you'll very rarely use Netcat to copy files uh, from one system to another. Now, this should be a pretty quick video as we're just gonna cover the three tools really quickly, but I do want to thank the people listed here who are my Patreon supporters and who make it possible for me to continually make videos like this uh, for everybody to enjoy. So thank you so much. Uh, if you want to uh, join and be a Patreon supporter, uh, just check out the link in the description and you could be on that list which oops, list over here uh which we're gonna have to start scrolling soon because uh more and more people are getting on there which i am humbled and i appreciate so much so what we have here are two different computers. Now I know we're on the same computer, but I'm SSH'd into uh, our test server, which is on the local network. And then this terminal window is our local Mate virtual machine that we do most of our demonstration on. Now over here on this test server, I've prepared a couple things. If we do LS, we'll see we have cool thing, file.txt and a folder called stuff. And if we look inside stuff, there's just two files in there as well. All right, so that's where uh, our information is currently stored over here on our local computer there's nothing so let's start by uh, learning the scp command now scp is secure copy and it works just like the copy command on a local file system except of course you have to specify the host so first we say scp and we say what is the source of the file that we're going to copy and in our case we have to specify the remote computer which is test. Now, just for clarity's sake, at least this first time, um, I will do it all out. I'm going to say S powers, even though it's the user is S powers on both computers. So I wouldn't have to do this, uh, but you can specify it. It will assume the same user if you don't specify. And then I could say test because that's a domain name, like the DNS name, but I'll actually spell out the, or I'll write out the entire IP. So 192.168.1. I think it's 36, I believe. And uh, let's look. Uh, over here, IP, A, uh, yes, 36. All right, so, so that is the uh, remote host and the remote username. And then you do a colon, and then you have to say, where is the path? Well, it's in home S powers, and it's called cool underscore thing. Now we could just say, uh, we can use uh, globs here as well. So we could say cool thing dot star, and it will do everything that, that matches, which in our case is just the one file, and then a space, and then the destination. And in this case, the destination is dot or the current directory. All right, so we'll press enter, and oh, it's the first time I've connected. So I'm going to say yes, I would like to connect, and I have to type in my password. And if we clear the screen and ls, look at that, the file has been transferred. Now, just like with CP, uh, if you specify a folder you have to do the dash R flag to recursively copy stuff. So if, for example, if we wanted to get the entire stuff folder, we would have to do SCP and I'm gonna do it shorter this time. All right, instead of saying S powers at, since the username is the same, I'm just going to uh, leave off that the username at, and I'm also going to use the DNS name instead of the IP address. So if we do SCP dash R for recursive test, and then colon home S powers, stuff to dot, what this should do is recursively copy the folder stuff from the remote test server to our local uh, computer. Press enter. It's going to ask for the password. And sure enough, now if we look, we've also copied that folder. So uh, that's basically just like copying from the local file system, except it does it over the network, which is really, really convenient. And we can switch around the source and destination. We don't have to go from like the remote server to here. We could also copy something from here to the remote server. So let's actually do that. So over here, uh, let's get rid of coolthing.jpg, right? So it's not there anymore. Uh, if we wanted, we could then start from here and say SCP coolthing.jpg is now our source. And then the destination where it's gonna get put is test home 
S powers, and we can just leave that uh, as the place it's going to put it. And if we don't specify a file name, it's going to use the same file name. So if we press enter. And now it looks like it copied. So if we come back over here to test, and there it is, let's copy that file back. Okay, so SCP works almost exactly like the CP command. Um, it just, you have to specify uh, a host, a remote host, instead of just local files. Now, rsync works very, very similarly, uh, but it's important to know that rsync actually works in two modes. Uh, you can actually have an rsync daemon running, and I think it runs on port 873 or something like that, and that's what it listens on. Uh, generally, though, most of the time, you will just use rsync over SSH, and that it does that by default. You don't have to specify anything uh, special for it to use SSH, uh, but just know there is a daemon version of rsync, and a lot of times, like a a uh, repository of like ISO files for a Linux distribution might be hosted on an rsync server that is actually listening on port 873. Um, it's a little bit faster. There's not the overhead of compression uh, or of, of encryption, but also it's not encrypted. Uh, so, you know, usually we'll do it over SSH these days. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate. But just to know, just know it does work in daemon mode uh, where it's just rsync, but we're going to do it over SSH and that's usually what you'll do. Now, the big difference between um, SCP and rsync is that rsync will only copy files that have changed. So if you uh, want to keep something uh, up to sync, like you um, want to make sure that a remote set of files is up to date with the current set, if you use rsync, it will check all the files, but it will only transfer if things have changed or if there's new files. And there's a whole bunch of options. You can like delete like files if they're uh, missing on the source and you copy to the destination and there's extra files there, there are flags to delete those so you can keep them in perfect sync. Um, but by default, it will work just like SCP, except it will only copy the bits required. It will check to see what's already there and only copy stuff that's needed. All right, so let's demonstrate that really quick. I'm going to clear this screen. So just to, to get a clear idea of what we're going to do. All right, what do we have over here? Anything? All right, good. This is perfect. So um, I am going to look inside stuff. What's it? What do we have inside stuff? We have thing one and thing two. So let's get rid of thing two. All right. So now inside stuff, we have just thing one and we have uh, this JPEG file in here. We don't have a copy of file.txt and we only have one of the files and stuff. So if we use rsync, we should be able to get everything up to date, both of the thing one and thing two. Uh, we're going to copy that file.txt, uh, but it won't have to copy over cool thing.jpg or the thing one. All right, so let's see if that's really what happens. Let's clear the screen just to uh, get a fresh start here. And now we're going to say rsync dash R because I want it to do it recursively. This is the same thing as SCP and CP. If you want it to go to the folders recursively, you have to use dash R. Okay, so rsync dash R and the source place or the source files that we want to copy are test. And again, the same thing. If this was a different username, we would do like user at test or user at 192.168.1.36. I'm just doing the shorthand here. Uh, so rsync dash r test and then home s powers. And I just, I put a forward slash at the end of it. And what that means is I want you to do all this stuff inside this folder. I could actually, just so it's clear, say star. That way it will copy all the files like star dot star that it finds in that remote folder. And the destination is going to be dot, our current folder. All right. So let's see if this does uh, exactly. In fact, I'm going to add a dash V flag for ver verbose. And that's just going to give us more information about what it's actually doing. I just want to make sure that we can see that it only copies the file that it's files that it needs. So we'll do that. It should ask us for our password. All right. So it, it did the, it got the whole file list. It went through everything. It said that it sent 117 bytes, received that went that fast, but here's the deal. Total size is this speed up is a 0.53. Now that's, a little weird. You would expect it to be a little bit faster, uh, but let's see if we got everything. Uh, thing one and thing two is in stuff, and uh, sure enough, we have the file.txt and cool thing 
uh, .jpg. So let's clear the screen. If we were to run the file or run our sync again, it should go extremely fast and not even have to really copy any files because we already have a complete copy. So press enter. All right, it did. And I think because they're such small text files, there's actually more overhead in checking them than actually transferring them. Uh, but basically it didn't have to copy any of the files at all because everything was still there. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm going to clear the screen. R minus RF star. So everything is gone. We're gonna clear the screen here. Now we will use netcat. Uh, first of all, I mean, this video is not too long yet. So usually when you have a netcat demonstration, uh, you actually uh, you actually show this example that uh, of how netcat works because netcat works. Basically, you set up an ad hoc daemon. It listens on a certain network port. And then on the other side, you connect to that network port. So in this case, if we were to say NC, which is netcat, that's the netcat program, dash L for listen and on port 9999. Okay, so we do that, press enter. Netcat is just listening on port 9999 for somebody to connect to it with Netcat. So over here, I can say uh, Netcat test, so the server test, or I could do the IP address, but Netcat test. Now there's no authentication here. We're just connecting directly to the port and you have to tell it what port, 9999. Press enter and now they're connected. And this is generally the demonstration that you see. Hello, press enter, it appears over there. Person over here. Why, hello. And it just goes back and forth because they're just connecting those ports together. However, if you can't, if you combine this concept with standard input and standard output, you can actually transfer a file, all right? Let's try that out. So uh, we just pick one of them here. We'll just hit control C, all right? And so now Netcat has been uh, stopped, so it's not running anymore. Clear the screen over here, clear the screen now. These are the files that we have. So if we expand on the idea of listening on a port, instead of our typing going through, we can redirect standard input so that it reads a file instead of our typing. So we would do the same sort of thing. We would say NC dash L for listen. It doesn't matter what port, I'm gonna do 9999 again. And then less than means redirect standard input and we'll do that file.txt, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So we do that and it's listening, okay? Now, since it's listening and it's trying to immediately send from standard input the contents of that file over here, well, first first we will just show you this, this part. NC test 9999. If I just press enter, what do you expect to see? the contents of that text file were immediately printed on our screen. So it's kind of like uh, we preloaded that chatting thing that we did and now it's on the screen. So control C and we're done, okay? Now, if you remember over here, there's no files. So let's do this exact same thing again. I'm gonna redirect the file from standard input so that that's what it's serving out. Like when we connect to Netcat, that's the text that's going to be there. Well, now we could say NC Netcat test 9999, but instead of displaying it on the screen, I want you to redirect standard output into file.txt. Press enter and we don't see anything. However, if we press control C and do an LS, now if we look at file.txt, we have transferred that file over netcat. Hopefully that makes sense. That's what we did. In fact, I don't know if I ever showed you the contents, but over here, that's what is inside uh, the file.txt. Now, like I said, this is kind of just the very basics of using SCP, rsync, and netcat. Um, you can do a lot of things with each of those programs, but this is how you transfer a file. That's specifically what's mentioned in the Linux Plus objective. So I wanted to make sure you got that part down so you know exactly what's happening there. But there's much more you can do with like rsync. I use rsync all the time. And generally, like if I'm moving a folder full of like HTML files um, or something to a new server, I will do rsync. For a number of reasons one uh, let's say it's copying a whole bunch of files or a whole bunch of video files and it gets interrupted halfway through well if you do rsync it will pick up where it left off because it scans all the remote files and then it only copies the stuff that is missing from the 
destination when it looks at what you've specified in the source. So anyway, rsync is very, very powerful. Um, SCP, I generally think of it just like copy, but over the network instead of on a local file system. And like I said, you'll probably never really use Netcat, but it's a cool program that does kind of a, a really simplistic and cool thing. Anyway, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. See you in the next video.